Hi, this is Beatriz and in this video I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step editing process of my latest conceptual artwork, Flourishing. In order to create this picture, I used four images. First, a picture that I took of my hand, then two pictures that I took from a free image bank, which contained the flower and the stem, and finally a texture. I took some of these pictures from free image banks and I will add those that I use the most on the description below. I'm gonna start by opening the picture that I took of my hand in Photoshop and I'm gonna be dragging the first picture that I downloaded with a flower. From this flower, I only want the top part, which means the petals, the pistil and the stamen. So I'm gonna place it more or less where I think it will be by rotating the image a little bit and then I'm going to head to the quick selection tool, click select subject and that's going to create a very rough selection of the flower and as you can see it selects also the leaves and the stem. So I'm going to remove those from the selection by keeping alt pressed. By doing so you can see that the plus sign on the quick selection tool becomes a minus which is going to deselect everything where I'm gonna be going over. Something like this looks nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a mask. And as you can see, now only the part that I want is visible. But I still feel that there are parts on the edges of the petals that were not perfectly masked. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the brush tool and I'm gonna paint over the mask with black and a pretty small and soft brush to mask or hide those parts that I don't want to be visible. I'm gonna create a group, which I'm gonna call flower, and I'm gonna be adding all the layers to that group that will affect the flower only. I will start by adding a curves adjustment layer and clip it to the layer with the flower. With this curves adjustment layer, I'm gonna be editing a bit the highlights and shadows of the flower to match a bit more those of the vase picture with the hand and also to add a little bit more brightness because at the moment it looks a little bit dark. Now I'm gonna add a hue and saturation adjustment layer and clip it to the layer with the flower. I'm gonna edit a little bit the hue to add more warmth to the flower, decrease the saturation slightly and add a little bit of lightness. I'm also gonna open the blues because I feel that there's a little bit of a blue hue on the petals. So I'm gonna bring down both the saturation and lightness for the blues. And I feel this already helps a little bit. And if I toggle on and off the layer visibility, you can see that now the flower has a little bit more warmth and that blue hue is not as strong anymore. Now I'm gonna drag another image that I downloaded with flowers and I only want to use the stem from this image. I wanted to use a thicker stem compared to the one that the first flower had because it's gonna merge better with the veins and the effect that I want to achieve with this picture is gonna be a lot more noticeable. So I'm gonna grab the lasso tool, create a rough selection of this stem I'm gonna create another group which I'm gonna call stem and I will add all the layers that affect the stem in that group. And then I'm gonna repeat the same process by going to the quick selection tool, select subject, and in this case it did a better job selecting since there was only the stem. So I'm gonna go ahead and mask it. Next, I want to edit the curvature and the shape of this stem. So I'm gonna go to Filter, Liquify. And there I'm gonna select the Forward Warp tool with a low pressure and I'm gonna shape this stem in a way that it blends nicely with the hand and makes the flower appear as if it's growing from the hand And now I'm gonna reposition it so that it more or less falls on top 
of the veins that I can see on my hand. Then I'm gonna create a levels adjustment layer, clip it to the layer with the stem and adjust a little bit the brightness levels. I will also add a hue and saturation layer, clip it also to the layer with the stem and I will adjust slightly the hue, saturation and brightness. Now I'm gonna add a mask on the layer with the stem. I'm gonna grab the brush tool. I'm gonna decrease the opacity and flow to about 40%. And then with black selected, I'm gonna be painting over the mask on the bottom part of the stem so that it blends a little bit better with the hand and there's not such a sharp or hard cut. And this is where it's very important to play with the values of opacity and flow for this brush. At this point, I'm ready to start creating the roots. And this is something fairly simple. Basically, if we wanna create the effect that the roots are under the skin and they are similar to veins, what we need to play with is with the illusion of volume under the skin. And how do we achieve volume? By adding highlights and shadows. So the parts that stick out or bulge the most are gonna have highlights and then their parts where it sinks are gonna have shadows. And the way I'm gonna do so, it's really by just adding curves adjustment layers. First, I'm gonna create a curves adjustment layer with highlights. And I'm gonna do so by bringing the curve up and inverting the layer. And then with the brush tool and an opacity and flow of 100%, I'm gonna take a soft brush and with white, I'm gonna start painting over the mask to reveal the effect of the curves layer, which is this highlight. And here I'm just gonna start drawing the shape that I want these roots or veins to have. This is fairly simple to draw and you don't need to be super precise. In fact, if they look a bit more rough and not super straight and perfect, they are gonna look more realistic. And also try to change a little bit the size of the brush so that the core of this root is thicker and as it branches out, the roots become thinner and thinner. And the next key thing that we will do to get this effect to be more realistic is to add blur to it because this illusion of volume is not going to be sharp. It's going under the skin and it has to blend very nicely and be very smooth. So we're gonna go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and add enough blur so that you can still see the shape but it's not too sharp anymore. In this case, I added about 15 blur. So now we have created the highlights and in order to add volume, we also need the shadows. So I'm gonna create another curves layer. I'm gonna bring the curves down to add shadow, invert the layer. And again, with the brush tool, I'm gonna create shadows on both sides of the highlights. Because as we said, the parts that stick out the most are where we are gonna add the highlights and the parts that sink are gonna have the shadow. So the shadows need to go around the highlights. And this looks very rough, but again, a very important step is adding the blur. So we're gonna go back to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And you can see how this already looks a bit more realistic. So I will increase a little bit more the blur. And in this case, it needs to be even more blurred than the highlights, because we want to add a more subtle effect to the shadows. And now that we have created this illusion, we need to start making it look more realistic and blending better with the skin. So first, let's go to the curves layer that has the highlights and let's decrease the fill enough so that we can still see the volume and the, those highlights, but it looks a bit more realistic. And then let's grab again the brush tool, lower the opacity and flow, and go over the edges of those highlights with black to correct them a little bit. So in this case, I feel that maybe it's a bit too thick. So I'm just gonna delete a little bit around the edges with this low opacity and flow. And again, this doesn't need to be perfect. The texture needs to be a bit 
lumpy in order to look more realistic. And I'm gonna do exactly the same that I just did with the highlights, but with the shadows. So I'm gonna be painting with a low opacity and flow on top of the mask where the shadows are with color black. And I will hide a little bit this effect with the shadow so it's not as obvious. It needs to blend and transition a little better. And now I'm gonna create a new layer, which I'm gonna drag under the stem. And what I want to do is create the shadow that the stem will be projecting on the hand. So with the eyedropper tool, I'm gonna sample a color from the shadows that are visible on the hand. I'll change the blending mode of the layer to multiply. And then I'm gonna grab the brush tool with a pretty soft brush selected. And I'm gonna start drawing the shadow for the stem. So the shadow on the bottom of the stem should be pretty close to the hand because as the stem is growing from the hand, from that side, the stem is gonna be pretty much touching or in very close contact to the skin. But then once we start seeing this curvature, we want to create the illusion that the flower is growing upwards. So then the shape of the shadow will also have this curvature. Also the closest the stem is to the skin, the darker the shadow is gonna be, and the farthest it goes away from the skin, the softer the shadow is going to be. And we're gonna go back again to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we're gonna soften a little bit the shadow so that it looks a bit more smooth. And finally, I need to also add a shadow for the flower. Something like this, with a bit of an irregular shape projected by the petals on the skin. Now I'm gonna go to the layer where the stem is and I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna add also a little bit blur to it so that the edges seem a little bit more blurred out. It's a very subtle effect, but as you can see, now it looks a bit more smooth. Then I'm gonna add these two layers into a group so that all the adjustment layers above it affect both of them. And as you can see, when I create the group, I will need to then clip them again to the group, but I will do it in a second. Let's first add a curves adjustment layer, bring the curve down, invert it, and now I'm gonna start creating volume on the stem. So the stem is also gonna have a bit of shadow and then the top part of the stem is gonna have the shadow projected by the petals. I'm gonna go back to the previous adjustment layers that we added with hue and color and levels and adjust a bit the values to help blending this stem better with the rest of the picture. And notice that I've clipped back all those adjustment layers to the stem. Now I'm gonna repeat the same process that I just did with the curves adjustment layer, but in this case, I'm gonna bring the curve up and I'm gonna be adding highlights. Something about this looks good. And I am noticing a line of brightness on the left side of the stem. And at the moment it looks like it's getting some sort of rim light, which this stem shouldn't have. So I'm gonna go back to the layer with the stem, the original one, the one that we haven't blurred. I'm gonna go back to the mask and with the brush tool and black selected, I'm gonna delete that light on the stem. And as you can see, this makes a huge difference. It looks like it blends a lot better now. I'll go back to the flower 
and I will add a selective color layer because I still feel that there's this bluish hue on the petals and I feel that maybe they go more towards cyans than blues. So I'm gonna go to the cyan color and I'll adjust a little bit the values to the point where I cannot see that blue hue anymore. I will also go to the yellows to add a little bit more warmth to the stamen. And finally, I will go to the neutrals and that will also help me color correct a little bit the petals. I'll also go to the base image of the hand, create a group where I will add all the layers that affect the hand only. And I will also create a selective color adjustment layer. And I feel that now everything looks a bit more balanced and blending better together. I will go back to the group with the roots. I will rename the layers shadows and highlights so that it's more clear what I'm doing. And I'm gonna add a overlay effect to both of them because the veins have this greenish bluish color to them. And to make it more realistic, we're just gonna add a little bit of hue to both the highlights and the shadows. I'm gonna change the blending mode to hue and with opacity of below 30, I've created now this overlay color that makes these roots or veins look more realistic. I will repeat the same process with the shadows. And now that all the elements look good separately, we need to start making some global adjustments so that everything blends in nicely together. So let's create a curves layer, change the blending mode to screen, and then invert it. So with this layer, I'm gonna emphasize the highlights of the image overall. So I'll grab the brush tool with a fairly soft and big brush. Again, keeping the opacity and flow pretty low. And I'm gonna be painting with white over the mask, over the areas where I can see that there's already highlights. So I want to emphasize them. I'll add another curves adjustment layer with a blending mode of multiply, inverted. I will call it global shadows. And again, with the brush tool, I'm gonna be painting with white over the mask on those areas where I want to emphasize the shadows, where I can see that there are already natural shadows. I will add a few extra shadows on the point where the stem and the roots transition so that the volume and the effect looks even more realistic. Now that the global lighting is ready, I'm gonna merge all the visible layers into a new layer. And now I feel like I want to resize a little bit the canvas, so I will change the proportions to four by five. So I will grab the selection tool I'll take one of the sides, I'll go to Edit, Content Aware Scale, and with Shift selected, I'm gonna fill in the area on the right. And I will repeat the same for the area on the left and for the area on the top. So I'm gonna add a paper texture, which I also got from a free image bank. I'm gonna change the blending mode of the texture to soft light. I will decrease the fill, and this adds a very subtle texture to the whole image, which I really like, and also a little bit more warmth to the colors. And as my final step, I will go to the layer below the texture, and I'm gonna do some color corrections on camera raw. So I'm gonna go to the curve, still adjust the global lighting a little bit, then I'm gonna go to the red tone curve, and I will add a little bit of red to the shadows 
and a little bit of green to the highlights. I will also add a little bit of vignetting because I always feel that it adds more focus to the center of the image and a little bit more dramatism and depth. I will also add a little bit of grain, not too much. And finally, I'll go to the color mixer and I will add just slightly the hues for reds, oranges, yellows and greens so that they blend a little bit better together. I will also bring down a little bit the saturation so that it's not too orange, not too red. And this is it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Have a nice day and see you next time.